Today I'm going to show you how to make the best portable DIY air conditioner, or air cooler is a better word, for the least amount of money possible. Now I've done several of these um, over the years, and um, so I've run tests on them so I kind of know what works. And I've had a lot of people ask me questions, and the three main questions that they ask is, or the things that they're concerned about with these coolers is the temperature, how cold does it get, the humidity, how much moisture does it put in the air, and how long is the ice gonna last? And we're gonna answer all three of those questions so that by the end of this video, you will know how to make the best one possible for the least amount of money. So in looking at these three things, there are actually three things that affect it. The first one is the cooler, what type of cooler you use. Because a lot of people have said, well, if you use a more insulated cooler, the ice might last longer or it might make the temperature colder. So I've built these things with, you know, cheap $20 uh, coolers before. I've even used some styrofoam coolers and I've used uh, more expensive coolers up to a hundred bucks. Now I, I couldn't find it in myself to, you know, cut up and cut up in a, an expensive Yeti, but I can tell you this, out of all the different coolers I've used, none of them really make a difference. They don't make a difference in the temperature, the humidity, or how long your ice lasts. And the reason they don't is because you got the fan blowing this warm air over the ice and then exhausting it out. And as it does that, you, you have this warm air hitting it. So the insulation of the cooler is not gonna matter because the warm air is getting inside of it regardless. So it doesn't matter what kind of cooler you use when you make your DIY portable air cooler. So with the cooler not really making a difference, you can save a lot of money because you could just use, you know, like a bucket or styrofoam cooler or whatever. This whole setup right here only cost me $18 and that's because the only thing I bought was the fan. I already had this extra cooler laying around. I had an extra elbow laying around. The elbow is something that's not really needed. It's just used to direct the air in a direction you want it to go. Now, if you want to buy a cooler and buy an elbow, if you need to buy these things, you can expect to spend a little bit more than $18. So the second thing that affects those is the type of fan you use. Now you can use a low speed fan or you can use a, a high powered fan, or you can use one like this, which has three speeds, low, medium, and high. And uh, what's really nice about it is you can plug it into a wall uh, or you can use a battery pack if you want to, if you're needing to be portable and you don't have electricity. So it's a great little fan that works uh, pretty well. And if you have a higher speed fan, in other words, you're moving air across the ice faster, then your ice is gonna melt quicker. You're gonna get a little bit better temperature. It'll be a little bit colder, not by a lot, but a little bit. And um, if you're in a very small space, I would just put your fan speed on low. If you're in a little bit bigger space, put it on high. So the fan makes a difference only in the temperature a little bit, but it will melt your ice pretty quick, depending on you know, how fast it's going. As far as humidity, not a huge difference. So the third thing that affects the temperature, humidity, and how fast the ice melts is the actual ice. What kind of ice do you use? Are you using crushed ice that you buy in the bag at the store or are you using block ice that you bought in the store or maybe you uh, filled a gallon with water and froze it? If you put in crushed ice, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get a colder temperature. Crushed ice, it, it does give you a colder temperature than block ice. Every time I've done it, that's been my results. The humidity has not really been, you would think the crushed ice would be delivering a little bit more humidity. I haven't really seen that being the case, uh, maybe a little bit. So it does affect temperature, does not really affect humidity much. But now how fast your ice melts is a big difference, right? If you've got crushed ice in here, your ice is gonna melt a lot faster than it will if you're using block ice. In fact, a block of ice of the same weight will last you twice as long as crushed ice. I've done tests with it where I put 16 pounds of crushed ice and then 16 pound blocks of ice. And um, the block ice will last you 18 to 20 hours. It'll last a really long time. Crushed ice, you're looking at, you know, eight to 10 hours. If you're in a place that say is 95 degrees, your ice is gonna melt differently than if you're in a place that's at 85 degrees because you're, you're sucking in warmer air. Obviously, the warmer the air that goes in, the quicker the ice is gonna melt. But from my experience, uh, no matter what that is, the block ice is gonna last you twice as long as the crushed ice. Um, but the crushed ice is gonna give you a little bit better temperature. So with that in mind, the biggest thing that affects the, the temperature and the, the ice melting and all of that 
is the actual ice that you put in it, not this equipment right here. So you can build these things super cheap, right? You don't have to go out there and spend $400 on the coolest cooler or, or any of that stuff or spend a lot of money on a, a very expensive, well-insulated cooler. It doesn't matter. What matters is the ice you put in it. One other little trick you can do, well, two other tricks. One is if you're using crushed ice and you put salt on the ice, it will give you even colder temperatures, but keep in mind your ice is going to melt a lot faster because salt makes it melt faster, but it, it does make it colder. The other thing is if you can get down below the ice, like on this one, for example, I just have my fan right here, but I built one, um, I built one cooler and actually it'll be in, I'll have a link in the description below and actually I'll have it up here in one of these corners too. But um, that cooler, I actually made it where the, uh, the airflow went down below the ice so that it has to filter up through the ice and that, that will give you colder temperatures as well. So that's pretty much, that design is the only thing that you could probably do better other than making sure you're using the right ice for whatever your application is. So how do you build these things? Well, it's super simple. All you do is put two holes in your container, no matter what that container is. You gotta have a hole for your fan and you gotta hole, have a hole for exhaust. You don't even have to have this. This is just to direct the air a certain way. It's, it is, a, you know, more convenient. But you just cut those two holes. You need intake and exhaust. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Cooler doesn't matter. Fan matters a little bit. Ice matters the most. So with that being said, you can go out there and build the best cooler for the least amount of money possible. Look at some of my other uh, coolers that I've built uh, in my on my channel get some ideas there. Other people have built some and uh, yeah, put yours together and let me know how it goes.